Hello, I'm Don Was, the president of Blue Note Records, and joining us today, all the way from South Africa, is the brilliant pianist, composer, Blue Note recording artist, and my good friend, Enduduzo Makatini. How are you, man? I'm fine, brother. So great to, to be here with you, man. It's great to see you. <laughs> Well, I think I mentioned yeah. to you, we recently announced the extension of our Blue Note 80th Anniversary Vinyl Reissue Series. We're going to yeah. continue it with yeah. the Blue Note Classic Vinyl Reissue Series. It's all analog, 180-gram vinyl albums, uh, mastered by the oh, legendary man. Kevin Gray, directly from the Ooh. original first-generation master tapes manufactured at the Optimal Plant in Germany. The Classic Series is going to kick off with Lee Morgan's The Sidewinder and McCoy Tyner's uh, legendary album, The Real McCoy. And, and the dudes, I know, I know that oh, man. McCoy, I know he's one of your heroes and uh, influences. And for the non-musicians out there, can you talk about the things that make him such a giant? Yeah, it's a lot of things, but I think... Um, First and foremost, like if, if you are listening to McCoy Taina from the continent, which means in Africa, and you've never heard jazz before in your life, you might just probably think that's some of the folk music that we play here. So that's, that's really how, you know, a lot of us gravitate towards him because there is just like a, a natural kind of leaning to African folk sounds that we're familiar with that just gives us a beautiful uh, kind of context to come into this music. So, you know, and also like, you know, his rhythm is just like, it's like a dance, you know? So, so even if you can relate to the very advanced stuff that he was doing at a harmonic and melodic level, you know, he gives you an opportunity to just like dance along to his rhythm. So I think that's, mm -hmm. that's quite a special thing to have as, as a piano player. Mm, that's incredible. He's he's working on three or four different levels, isn't he? Definitely, definitely, man. You know, what do you think it is about the real McCoy that that makes it such an enduringly uh, relevant and uh, timeless album? Yeah, you know, I think the the real McCoy hinges on a lot of things. I mean, at a historic level, we understand the album to be coming out of a at a very important moment in the U.S. under the civil rights movement, you know. Um, also, we have to keep in mind that uh, McCoy Tyner had just uh, left the Coltrane group at the time. Coltrane had just departed. So I think there's a lot of the symbolism that surrounds the record. But also in South Africa, the 1960s uh, are sort of like, you know, paired with the Soweto, um, no, it was the Sharpeville massacre in 1960, mm -hmm. where people were fighting similar things against like segregation and stuff. So as a symbol, then that, that album stands for like a voice for people's freedom under very difficult circumstances and difficult times. But also when you look at some of the songs, they have a, a level of gentleness that is like, you know, sort of gave a sense of hope. So, so I, I think, you know, I don't know how, how deliberate he was about the selection of these five songs, but for me, they touch on different aspects of protest, you know, and a way of, of going against something, but a way of confronting something at the same time. And of course, you know, when you look at the personnel, you realize that it was a very deliberate thing, linking directly from Tyner via Elvin Jones, but also Ron Cutter, you know, and Joe Henderson. So kind of like, like a big celebration of of like people that were like minded and and had a, had a kind of kindred ship as well mm. in the music. Do you have a favorite song from the album? <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a difficult one because I love different songs for different things. But of course, you know, like you know, uh, passion dance is just like it stands out. <laughs> At a pianistic level, it's just like when you learn that melody, something happens to you when the McCoy dance kind of like gets into your body, gets into your fingers. But also there are reflective moments, you know, search for peace. A 
and looking at the the almost kind of impossibility of peace at the time, but like this, you know, searching otherwise, searching whether you get it or not. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then Blues on the Corner was the first McCoy Taina song I ever played. gave that to me to play as a solo piano so um yeah man all of these songs have contemplation well i mean it has so many connections with indau on my current record as well it's just like that kind of three four in that kind of way It was just like instantly something that was familiar when I heard it. I was like, I see my grandmother dance to that. That's a good <laughs> sign. <laughs> <laughs> well, you make me want to go back and listen to it from that perspective now. I'm going to today. And uh, I'll, I'll send you one of the new ones. You, you'll love it. They really, they really sound great, man. And the dudes, oh, are, man. Thank, thank you so much for, for joining us today. It's really good to see you. I hope you stay healthy and stay fit and keep playing out there. Lots of love to you, man. And thanks for, for having me and to talk about someone so important. Uh, more so for this country and, you know, kind of like a bridge into the music. So we are thankful always. Beautiful, man. The Blue Note Classic Vinyl Reissue Series launches on December 4th and will feature albums from Herbie Hancock, Wayne Shorter, Dexter Gordon, (laughs) Kenny Burrell, Eric Dolphy, and a bunch of others, (laughs) the 16 of them all together. Go to bluenote.com to check out the complete release schedule. Thank you for joining us. Thanks. Good to see you, man. Take care. Blessings, brother.